Analysts uh, getting ready for the great debate. Uh, Don Cheeks and also Charles Walker are joining us this morning and a distinguished group of panelists from throughout the CSRA. Yes, this, this is what we've been talking about for a long time. First of all, uh, I want to say uh, thanks to all of our listeners. Uh, they've been calling in, emailing us at debate at uh, power107.net. All of the calls that we, re we uh, receive, uh, so many people in Augusta uh, have been waiting for this big debate this morning. And uh, we have a, a special guest of panelists. We want to say thank you guys for coming out this morning as well. Uh, we're going to go over to uh, Ed Ross from the uh, Clear Channel News Center, our news director for Clear Channel Augusta. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Fats. The rules of the debate are, are very simple. The, the panelists will ask a question uh, to a particular uh, a candidate. He will have uh, two minutes to respond, and the other senator will have one minute for a rebuttal. And that's basically it. We also will, uh, we've had people send in questions on the Internet, and we will intersperse them in two, and that will be basically the same rules, a uh, question to the senator uh, and a one-minute rebuttal. All right, that's uh, two minutes f to answer the questions, a two-minute response, and then a one-minute rebuttal. Okay. okay. Before we move on to our candidates this morning, we'd like to uh, uh, each, can uh, each panelist to introduce themselves and uh, what uh, job you represent. All right, we're going to start with you. Christina Head, uh, reporter, fill and anchor with WAGT News. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mallory Millinder, professor of journalism and French at Payne College. Okay. Good morning, Fats here. Bill Botham from Comcast. I'm the public relations and government affairs manager. Okay. Good morning, Chair Fats, everybody. Brad Means with WJBF News Channel 6. All right. Now, we're going to uh, ask our candidates to, uh, <laughs> should be pretty familiar with uh, everybody in Augusta. They should be pretty familiar with their names, but we're going to ask our candidates to introduce themselves. All right, starting with... Mr. Cheeks. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Thank you to the panelists and to the audience. I've looked forward to this, and I hope it's entertaining and very informative and help each person in the audience to understand the issues and better prepare themselves to vote. I'd just like to say thank you for the station for allowing us to be here. All right. Okay. And to my left, we have... Uh, Mr. Mr. Walker. Walker. Good morning. Good Fast morning. Here. Good morning. Uh, and good morning to you, the listening audience. Um, I'm glad to be here this morning. Let me first thank Power 107 for this program. This is needed in the community. Minnesota Fats and Chair, you do a great service to this community. First of all, I'm a husband and the father of four outstanding children. And I love Augusta. I'm a graduate of Lusalina High School, Augusta State University, and I'm a member of Mount Vernon Baptist Church where I serve on the trustee board. I care about my people, and I care about Augusta. I'm a Democrat, like Lyndon Johnson, Jimmy Carter, Ted Kennedy, Roy Barnes, John Conyers, and Bill Clinton. <clears throat> I'm a true Democrat. I am not a Zell Miller Democrat. A Democrat cares about people. I want to serve Augusta. There's a difference between Democrats and Republicans. <clears throat> the Republican part of Georgia is not the party of Lincoln, but the party of Goldwater. Reagan and Bush, Bush one and Bush two, John Ashcroft and Dick Cheney. <clears throat> Democrats want public education for our children, health care for our seniors, and we believe in a living wage. <clears throat> we believe in a criminal justice system that is free of political motivation and intervention and we despise the politics of personal destruction. <clears throat> That's why I'm running for the state senate. All right. Okay, those, uh, that concludes our opening remarks from each candidate. And, of course, we will begin our de debate, the mm -hmm. great debate. And, of course, we'll uh, go over to uh, Brad Means, who we call journalist number one for all intent and purposes, um, with your question. Your question will be directed to Mr. Cheeks. All right, Mr. Cheeks, we'll begin with you. It'll go out to both of you all. The question is this. Uh, what are you all going to do about the seniority issue? You are both seniority challenged if you make it back to Atlanta. Mr. Cheeks, you just beginning to climb the Republican ladder after switching parties. Mr. Walker, you, after having been out of the Senate, uh, no longer pack the senior clout that came with being majority leader. How are you all going to overcome that newcomer status, if you will, and bring things back to Augusta? We've seen so many problems this year. Fort Discovery's funding was hurt. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of huge projects come back from the legislature. What are you all going to do, considering your newness, to help Augusta? 
Mr. Cheeks, we'll start with you. All right, thank you for that question, but I hate to tell you you're wrong. I personally brought $110 million back to this area. If you'll ride down either the Fall Line Free West or the Parkway, you'll see the bulldozers and all working. That's the economy. We've stepped up the completion of those two roads seven years from where they were in the schedule. Not only that, I put in money for the medical college, YDC. I could go on and on telling you what all has been done for the economy, but let's talk about what you asked. Seniority, yes, it is important. And regardless if you've ever been there or not, when you come back, you are a freshman. And you say, what can we do? That's the reason that I claim to be a voter representing the people. I represent the people, all the people, and I do and can bring the funds back and there's no way that a freshman will go back and have the position that I have. I'm a conferee on the budget and I'm sure that'll be discussed before we get out of here today. I do have seniority. In fact, I will be third in, in line in seniority for the total Senate if I return. So yes, seniority does count. I'm already and have been chairman of the banking and financial institutions of which you have seen the legislation that I've covered. I've introduced and passed. It took me five years. Had to do it under the administration that's current there because I couldn't get the other administration to vote for it. The payday loans, which was the most unscrupulous lending, hurting the very people that we should be helping. Yes, my legislation is definitely for the people. The government should be for the people and by the people. I poll my people. I do what they tell me to do regardless of whether it's what I like or not because I said I would represent the people, and that's what I do. I do not represent a party. Now, on Monday, I spoke, or either Tuesday, to the Qantas Club, and I told them, they introduced me, and I had to correct the president. Last evening, I spoke Senator, to the doctors. Senator, we uh, we're over two minutes. We have to, uh, according to the rules, we have to... All you got to do is raise forward. your hand. There you go. Thank, Thank you. Sir. All right. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm running for the Senate because Augusta has fallen behind. We've lost $800,000 at Fort Discovery. The Augusta Mini Theater has been totally defunded of $200,000. The arts programs and the cultural programs at Augusta have been cut. Luther Lane and T.W. Joseph High School lost $200,000 in college transition funds that we had for Augusta College. They've cut $50,000 from the Augusta Child Advocacy Program for the ne neglected and sexually abused children. We have not gained anything in Augusta, and by my going back to Augusta, at least we will have someone who will fight for the people of Augusta. Augusta is hurting. They've closed the pharmacy at the Medical College of Georgia, and they've closed the Youth Development Center. That, if that's seniority, I don't want no parts of it. All right. Just in case you just... Do I have a rebuttal? Mm -hmm. Just in case... All right. Let me get my rebuttal. First of all, for discovery. They got $800,000. I, as a country, put an additional $800,000 in. The governor saw reasons to defer it. Now, mini theater. I personally, as a country, put in $50,000. Senator, governor, Senator he, sir, actually, you don't. We, the, the, we have a, a, a two minute response from the, Senate, from the candidate and then a one minute rebuttal, and we move on to the next question. But I'm having my rebuttal. It's, According to yeah. this paper, it says I get two minutes, he gets two minutes, yeah. and I get a minute. Yeah, yeah. go ahead with this, your rebuttal. Go question. ahead with your rebuttal. Each question. Right, yes, go sir. ahead with your rebuttal. All right, let's continue. Fort Discovery, I put the money in there. I tried to catch up from the years of the previous administration, and the governor saw fit not to. Why? Because a paid lobbyist was being paid, if you want to know what the facts were. Many theater. Why? because this senator standing right here stood up there when the man asked the question, what good are we getting? And he was the secretary to the appropriation, and he did not respond when the Martinez said absolutely nothing, and I have it in the papers in a quote. And he was the secretary to the appropriation on the conference committee and made no rebuttal. I'd like to continue with the rest of it, but my time, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Just in case you're just joining us, you're listening to the great debate on Power 107 and 96.3 KISS FM. It is 7.40, and uh, we're going to go on to our next journalist here, Mr. Bill Botham of Comcast. Good morning. Thank you, Fats. Good morning. Ms. Walker, in your opening statement, you made a point of stressing that you're a Democrat, given that the governor and currently the Senate are Republican. 
How important is party affiliation for the eventual winner of this race? Well, let me tell you, party affiliation, you either a Democrat or Republican or you're an independent. And you need, if you're an independent, you need to run as an independent. If you're a Democrat, you run as a Democrat. It's important about party affiliation. When we, uh, the people in Augusta, Georgia, and the people in across this state, elected a Democratic Senate in Georgia in 2002, and four people switched parties and turned the Senate over to the Republican Party. As a result of that, every Democratic chairman we had lost their position as a Democrat. You had five black uh, committee chairperson, and we lost every one of them except one. It does make a difference. Party does make a difference. You have to decide in this life, I am a candidate for the people, but you're either a Democrat or you're a Republican. When you go to the Senate, they organize the Senate, they organize the House based along party lines. You get to vote as a Democrat or you get to vote as a Republican. And whoever's in charge, that's who set the agenda for the state of Georgia. Okay. Senator Cheeks? Well, these questions are some I'd like to ask myself. You know, the senator on his website has got me saying I created uh, cost of Senate uh, eight Senate chairman. In fact, I have both rule books, the previous one and this one, the picture book, and there was only five. One of them was not a chairman. Three of them had quit, run for the Senate. And yes, we appointed, the Republicans appointed four Democrat chairmen when there had been only one Republican chairman when Democrats was in charge. We appointed two minorities and two whites as chairmanships as Republicans. Tell me what's fair, one or four. Let's talk about, uh, any, you know, to me, the proof is in these books. I mean, you know, I've documented everything I'm saying, and I'm going to have it. I'm going to put it here, and we can look at it when this is over. Now, I don't know the rest of your question about, he said the chairmanship. What else was the thing? The, the, the question was, how important is party affiliation? Party affiliation to me is, I'm a, I've never claimed to be a Democrat. I've never claimed to be a Republican. I ran as a Democrat. I, run, I changed parties because my opponent recruited at the last minutes of the camp qualifying time on opponent named <laughs> Monique Cheeks. Stood there, went in, and qualified her 20 minutes. I'm told I wasn't there before the end of the qualifying time. Yes, and I had told the Democrat Party that, and I, had, I didn't like the plan they'd given, but I told them in the caucus I would vote for it, raise more money than any other Democrat caucus senator. Not one penny. Remember, they said, well, we want our money back. I said, tell me what you gave me. I'll give you double. Haven't had to give the first penny back. They didn't help me the previous election, and they certainly weren't going to help me this election. I have a letter from the lieutenant governor so stating. All right. And a one-minute rebuttal by uh, Mr. Walker. Well, first of all, we need to understand something here. Is that we had eight minority committee chairperson, and now we have one. The second thing you need to understand is, is that when people elect you to public office, if you say you're going to run as a Democrat, then you ought to remain a Democrat. If you're going to run as a Republican, you ought to remain a Republican. If you're going to switch parties, you should resign the seat and allow the people the choice to select their own candidate. Uh, as it relates to uh, uh, some statement that the senator said, I can't remember what it was now, but uh, it simply is not true. Okay. You're listening to The Great Debate on Power 107 and 96.3 KISS FM. Today's R&B and Old School. We'd like to welcome all of our listeners just waking up this morning. Uh, this is The Great Debate that we've been telling you about, Senator John Cheeks and Mr. former uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Charles Walker. All right, Sheriff, we uh, move on to our next uh, journalist. All right, we, of course, are, are joined by a group of panelists, uh, Christina Head from WAGT, also Mary, Mary and Mallory Millender uh, from Payne College, Bill Botham from Comcast, and, of course, Brad Means from WJBF News Channel 6. We'll move on with our next question. Uh, Mallory uh, will have the floor. I'd like to follow up on the last question. Uh, Senator Sheeks, after you left the Democratic Party, um, the people who elected you to that position, you're now asking those same people to support you. Why should they? Because I have helped bring back the Cancer Research Center. You know, when, when you're out there and your mother does something to you and you don't feel that you have done any reason to get it, you feel bad. I felt I could help Augusta better. We had a Republican governor that was elected. And when I found my own party 
creating opposition for me and funneling money to my opponent that I had helped raise, then I felt like, I, as I had said in the caucus, you must want me to be out of this caucus. And I left the caucus. Had I had time to have qualified, requalified, when my opponent put in Monique Cheeks to run against Cheeks to run against me, then I would have qualified. If it wasn't the fact that it was a last minute deal. Now, I don't think I owe an apology to anybody because it only took one vote to elect me. Now, I think I would like for them to look at the voting record of what I did before, what I did during, and what I know I will do. I have represented the people on every issue, and I'm sure that's going to come out before this debate ends. I have not tried to be partisan. I have not been self-serving. I have not done anything that would take from my people. My people are the people of this state, my people more closely are the people that vote and elect me to office. Yes, I'm asking them to re-elect me, and there is a reason for it. This is probably the most critical election we will ever have in this area. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Walker? First of all, I repeat, I did not put anybody in the race against uh, Don Cheeks. Second of all, the money for the Cancer Research Center was put in the budget by Roy Barnes, so no money, no extra money was put in the budget for the Cancer Research Center. They don't have enough money. Now they have to float a bond in order to complete the Cancer Research Center. The second thing is, is that if seniority and switching parties has done so much, why has Augusta lost so much? Why is it that the senior center at the, on 15th Street has been closed down where our senior citizens uh, don't, even have, don't even have a good program so that they can get their meals now? I mean, this, this administration has been a disaster for Augusta, Georgia. We don't have any leadership, and all we get from our elected officials in Atlanta are excuses upon excuses. We need to do something about the governing process, our prison system. That, that system is overflowing with young African-American males. We got to do something about that because of that no good law, three strikes in y'all, that was passed by Zell Miller and a lot of right-wing Democrats who helped him to do that. The problem we have and the difference between Democrats and Republicans is that we deal with the issues affecting people. I sponsored a bill to, for the minimum, to increase the minimum wage in Georgia from about three dollars and fifty-five cents to four to five dollars and fifteen cents, the same as the federal government, and I had to fight tooth, tongue, and nail on the minimum wage. And my opponent voted against the minimum wage in the state of Georgia. That's not right. Okay, and of course, Mr. Cheeks, you get a one-minute uh, response. I'd like to go back to the first person where he was talking about these senators. He's got in his little uh, whatever it is on the web page. He's talking about Donzella Jane was a senator, never been. A, I mean, a chairman never been a chairman. He's also got David Scott, which was in Congress at the time, Charles Walker, which was defeated and not there. He's also got Ed Harbison. Ed Harbison was given a chairmanship and declined it. I can go on now. Let's talk about senior citizens. That's, that's nothing to do with the state. That's the federal government and the city of Augusta. We all know who runs the senior citizens. It's been in the paper now for three or four months. Let me tell you why we can't do as much as we did. First of all, we are taking in less money today this year, 204, than we did in 2000. Now stop and think about it. If you've had three or four more children and you got one of your spouses is not working, you've got less to do with, and that's exactly what we got. We got less money and more participants in this state to, to spend the money we got to go around. I, my time's up. Time. I'd like to go. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. And, of course, um, you're listening to the great debate on Power 107 and 96.3 KISS FM. We will go on to our next question. Do I get a rebuttal here? That, that was the that rebuttal. That was the rebuttal. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. We're moving on to our next question. Uh, Christina Head from uh, WAGT. Okay, uh, Mr. Walker, obviously both of you have served in office before. What is it that you learned during your time in office and even during your time out of office that would make you a better senator? You know, that's a great question. i tell you what I've learned since I've been out of office. I've learned that we need to have good, strong, courageous people representing those people who cannot speak for themselves. We have in this community many uh, poor people, especially poor mothers with children. I introduced legislation to create the Children's Health Insurance Program in the state of Georgia. That program allowed children and families to get health insurance, access to health, for $15 a month. This Republican administration has increased the cost of children health insurance from $15 a month to $68 a month. Now, a lot of people think that doesn't matter, but if you're only making 5 $6 an hour, that is a very significant change. So what I've learned is that we got to learn how to fight for people. We got to keep you, we got to stay humble, and you need to understand 
that in America, everybody counts. We can't throw people along the roadside and engage in, engage in politics of personal destruction and throw our family, throw our senior citizens, throw our children to the dogs. I have fought hard because I know that education is the natural equalizers in this country. If we can keep the Hope Scholarship based on need and not the SAT scores, more of our children can get a good education. And when they get a good education, that means that they will get a good job and they can take care of their families. It means something to have affirmative action programs in this state. It means something. At the University of Georgia, <clears throat> only 3% of the students admitted at the University of Georgia are African American. We need to change that. All right. And, of course, uh, Mr. Cheeks, your rebuttal? First of all, he's uh, finally got a correct answer. We were sp spending on the peach care, is what we're speaking about here, at 2.5 minimum level, uh, federal level of income. Because of the conditions we find ourselves in and because there was no money left, we reduced it to 1.85 of the federal poverty level was the word. Yes, we must balance our budget. We had to do it. We had a special session trying to do it because one member of the House would not sign the conference report. Education is important. When we passed the lottery, it did not say that that money would be spent for education. Go back and get the ballot. The following year, Senator Brown and myself introduced legislation that put it on the Ballot again as a constitutional amendment just simply said we would have to spend a minimum of 50 cents of every tax dollar collected in this state for education in addition to any lottery funds. The lottery is safe and sound. We know that it is. It's been in the paper. The lottery went up. They thought it was going to go down. The people are still taxing themselves. And if they want to do that, fine. I think, though, as long as we're going to do it, we should give it back to the people that's playing the lottery. And that's the people that sh that's playing it, the people that needs the education, <coughs> and not the most wealthiest person in the world. Now, going back again to the budget, we, by the Constitution of the state, must have a balanced budget. We cannot spend money for things we don't have. Our health care system currently is taking 30-some-odd percent total of every dollar comes in. Education is taking 54. Doesn't leave much. My time is up. All right. And, of course, uh, Mr. Walker, a response. Well, let me just say this to you all. Excuses won't work. I will. We got a $16 billion budget. We took out $6 million would have been enough money to keep the pharmacy open at the Medical College of Georgia. We have spent over $100 million on road projects that's been in the budget for 20 years. We funded highways all over Georgia, and yet our senior citizens, the medically needed senior citizens, we are threatening to put out one, a 1,500 1, senior citizens, we are threatening to put them out of nursing homes because we will not fund the medically needed programs. I don't want to say, stand here this morning and argue with my opponent. I'm sure that he has done the very best that he could. But the fact of the matter is, the senior citizens don't have a place to stay. All right. All right, you're listening to the great debate on Power 107 and 96.3 KISS FM, today's R&B and Old School. We've asked uh, listeners to email us their question at uh, Power 107, uh, debate at power107.net. We're going to go to Ed Ross, our news director for Clear Channel Augusta, to uh, read uh, a response from our uh, listeners uh, that email us. Yes, uh, Senators, uh, some of these are kind of heartfelt. These are... These are not journalistic questions. All right, and then this one would be directed toward Mr. Cheeks. This this one would be actually directed not at either senator, but we will maintain the same format. And okay. I'll let you answer, answer it. It's from a 17-year-old Brandon, and 17-year-old Brandon is asking, if elected, uh, what actions would you take to ensure the safety of local high school students, not only from other students, but uh, from other from administrators and public safety officers? Mr. Cheeks. Uh, Mr. Cheeks? Well, education is a local... Uh, and should be on the local and the elected officials of the Board of Education to do it. I think the Senate, the General Assembly, the Governor gives directions. I do feel that we should have safe schools as part of my program. Safe schools. How do you have safe schools? First of all, you start with the parents. Let's look and see if any of our uh, better schools like Davidson and, and uh, the one on Laney Walker, they don't have problems. 
Yes, it's deplorable when I pick up the news last night or listen to the news and 20 some odd students was arrested in the schools in Richmond County and yet we don't have that many people arresting all the bars and taverns in the whole state last night. Yes, it's wrong. What are we going to do? I'm not there to do anything but make laws. I can't dictate to people what to do, but I am praying constantly that the parents will get involved. That's the answer. You cannot put enough policemen in the school classrooms. You cannot no way can you make a teacher be a policeman. The teacher should be able to teach. The pupils should come to class ready to learn. And when they don't, the teacher should be able to put that student out. And they shouldn't have to have a policeman there to do it. But if it takes a policeman, we'll have them. And I think the state will fund them. Yes. Senator Walker? Well, you know, that's... Uh, public education should be safe for our children. You know, I, I'm from the old school. I was... Um, I went to Lucy Lane High School, which was one of the greatest high schools in, in Georgia. And, and we had people and teachers who would work with us. The kids are different today. Uh, well, I'm from the old school. We spat a rod to spoil a child. You know, we, they used to deal with us in a very tough fashion. But the problem we have in, a, in this country and in the state of Georgia, and right here in Richmond County, is that we do not have adequate funding for our teachers. We do not have a child. You can't expect a family to get up in the morning and, and not sure whether they're going to have breakfast or whether they can even feed their children, whether the children have been properly diagnosed with ADA or any kind of, of, of trouble. And then they go to school. Then we expect our teachers to become the parents, the police officer, and everything else. And that can't happen. This thing goes back to the, pan to the community. It starts with the parent. It starts with the community, the church, and we all must get involved. That's why I sponsored a le legislation and funding for $200,000 for a program to transition students from T.W. Josie, Lucy Laney, and Butler High School to, so that they could go to college. This, this Republican administration came in and cut out the $200,000, so now the children don't even have hope of going to college. We had 37 kids from Lucy Lane and T.W. Joseph to enroll at Augusta State University as a result of the program that was funded with the $200,000. They took it out, and they didn't take it out because it wasn't working. They took it out because I put it in. That's wrong, and that's why we have the problem. Let's educate the children. The kids who are doing well in school tend not to get in much trouble. I am embarrassed that we have deputies in our schools today. That is not right. No. All right, and of course, I, a one I don't response. know about the money that he's talking about being put in and taken out, but I do know that the governor and the Senate, and I'm talking about the Democrats, Senators, Red Republicans, certainly took a jaundice eye at some of the funds that he was funding and places going because we will show before this is over they weren't going where they were supposed to go. Now, if we're going to talk about it, I'm going to tell it like it is. And I got the documented facts to do it, and I'm sure it's going to come up. And we're going to talk about the pharmacy, I hope. I'm going to show you where the, where the person was getting a 500 a half million dollar contract with no bid while it's being cut. State didn't do it. A, an organization called MCG that people think is the Medical College of Georgia. Let me wait. I hope that question's coming. If you don't, I'll come back to it. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about who got the money, who closed the pharmacy, why, and how much money they was making when they closed it, and how much bonus the people's All getting right. now. All right. Your time is up. Right. Would you like to go uh, another Internet question or start back with uh, uh, that's segment? coming up this morning? All right. We're going to take a pause here for our station identification. We'd like to welcome you to the great debate here on Power 107 and 96.3 KISS FM.